Hello guys and welcome to geek for geeks In this video, we are going to talk about types in Go programming language. I hope you are excited, so let's get started. Go is statically typed. This means that Go knows what the type of your values are even at compile time and it can tell whether they are being used appropriately. For example, in this program here, we try to add the number 125 onto the string geek for geeks and before our program even compiles we get an error saying cannot convert the string geek for geeks to type int and this operation is invalid trying to add 125 to the value geek for geeks in some programming language this would fail at runtime possibly while you are presenting your software to a user in go it fails at compile time so your development team knows about the problem immediately there are many built-in types for numbers, most of which are used only in special circumstances. You should know they exist, so you're not surprised by them later on in this course. So I'll describe them to you briefly, but you can forget all or most of them, because there are only two numeric types you will be going to use on a regular basis. For integers, you have int, int8, int16, int32, and int64. The number at the end of int8 and n16 and so on are the number of bits that is zeros and ones that are used to store the number in memory. The more bits a number takes up, the larger its maximum value can be. int8 can hold a maximum value of 127. You'll get an error if you try to target a larger number as an int8, but n64 can hold a maximum value of over 9 quintillion. Of course, using more bit means using more of your computer's memory. But computers have so much RAM these days, it's generally not worth to use smaller types. Since the risk of errors is increased from using a number that's too large. The int types can hold negative or positive numbers, but uint types can hold only positive number. The u in uint stand for unsigned. Again. Unless you have a specific reason to use a uint, it's probably not worth the additional effort. You can just use an int type instead. In most cases, int and uint type can hold whole numbers. For floating point numbers, that is numbers with decimal points, you will want to use float32 or float64 types. But as I said, you don't need to remember most of these numeric types. By default, go treats whole number as being of the type int, which is the same as in 64 type unless you are on an old 32 bit operating system. And most floating point numbers are treated as float 64 type. We can confirm this by importing the reflect package and calling its type of function on an integer end on a floating point number. If we run this, it will output int for integer and float 64 for the floating point numbers. If you are using different numeric types and you want to do math or comparison with hardcore numbers, you will have to convert your values to int or float64 first. So unless you have a practical reason to do otherwise, you will find it's much more convenient to just use int and float64 type in your programs. Now let's add a string and a boolean value and see what the type of those are. So I'll say reflect.typeof and we'll add a string hello and then reflect.typeof and we'll add a boolean value false save it and rerun the program and we can see that in addition to the int and the float 64 from before we have a string and a bool value short for boolean these are the most frequently used built-in types it is also possible to define additional types the go standard library includes several packages that define types of their own for example, if we were to import the net and the time packages and then create a new net.ipv4 instance or a new time object and then print the types of those objects, we would get net.ip as the output as well as time.time. .time. Those are the types of those values that get created. I guess that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, drop a like and see you in the next video. Happy coding until then.